So now they're having to reaffirm that they're not food. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that has never happened before. So, today we're at JTB Reptile. And this is where he keeps all of his uh, animals. So let's go and see what he's got. No mind. There we go. There Here he is. <laughs> so, one of the uh, things that we're really excited about to show you all is this incredible enclosure here. And it's for Lacerta Billionata. So, these are captive bred by us. And just look at this, we'll show it to you later in the video, but this is just an incredible enclosure. Look at this incredible reptile setup in here. So, so we've got a uh, leopard geckos are in here. I am co-abbing co these now. Previously they weren't together, but a couple of weeks ago I did stick them uh, together. You can see Pepper, who's one of the females, tail just there, and uh, Dotty, the other female, is in the top right-hand corner. Speckles is in a hide. We can take a better look at them later. Yeah, yeah. Red the corn snake down incredible. in the enclosure just below. Uh, got lots of branches, there's more higher up in the back which you might not see from there. Now as you can see all these enclosures are bioactive. Yeah, they and are. They are the top notch enclosures. <laughs> I've never seen, honestly, these are so much better even than zoo design. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. You know, we're always quite sceptical of people keeping indoors with some of these species, but Joe here just shows you how to do it with the quality and the safety and the health of the animals proves this. Oh, I'm glad you just like it. <laughs> <laughs> Gecko. Yeah. Tell me about them. <laughs> well, there are there are three individuals in here. One male and two females. The two females are the ones which I did have in a quarantine set up in another room from February until what month is it now? August. So I've had them, you know, all that time in quarantine. Finally happy that they are okay to go in with my existing male. Uh, so they are all together now. Um, I have been watching them very, very, very carefully for signs of aggression. Uh, there are a couple of nicks on them yeah, yeah. Um, from interaction, but there's no missing limbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no major aggression. They're just getting used to each other. Uh, now, it and, is... that, and that's just, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, that's yeah. just one of the part and parcels of animal keeping. You are yeah, going to have conflict yeah. between... You've you know, got to allow animals, animals to exactly, be animals. Exactly. You, can't, you can't just like yeah, yeah. wrap them up in wool and leave them <laughs> in a corner and, oh, don't hurt each other. Um, you know because leopard geckos are typically thought of as solitary animals, but there's a document, I think it's Carnet Al, leopard geckos in Pakistan, where it's spoken about how these are communal animals yes, in the exactly. wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, males will fight to the death, but females typically, you know, they're always in groups yeah, guarded yeah. by a male. So to keep them solitary, okay, you're not going to risk yeah, fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. But is that necessarily exactly. the best? Because you do see interaction um, there's, there's speckles coming out now, he's, uh, he's heard, the, heard the sound so I presume um, he's thinking he's getting fed, which he is getting fed later. If I open the door here and give him a little, uh, give him a little, little rub, he might, uh, might start coming out. But um, no, to keep them solitary is, without a shadow of a doubt, unnatural. Yeah, yeah. Because they are communal animals in the wild. Now, saying that again, I've got to be a voice of caution because in a small environment, if you've got like a 45 by 30 centimetre little 10 gallon or something, and you've got three leopard geckos in living, that, living in that, if they decide that, okay, I'm going to defend this as my little space now, 
they're just going to tear yeah. each other apart and, and they I can't think, escape. I think that's one of the, the reasons why cohabbing gets such a bad rap or yeah. can get such a bad rap is because, you know, people think that it's just keeping animals in a small box together. Done. Yeah. And it's, there's a lot more to that. I mean, if you're going to simulate social behaviour, then you've got to simulate environmental, Precisely. you know, the ecological role. And, and I suppose it's as well with people doing heating and lighting yeah. so wrong. If you've got a tiny little heat mat and those animals are struggling to, like, they don't have the, in, the near infrared for deep tissue heating and they're struggling to get warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, is yeah, then yeah. A, a violent exactly. competition yeah, for yeah, the yeah, heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not really comparable. You can't just say, oh, leopard geckos live together here and they live together in the yeah, wild, yeah, 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 therefore yeah, they yeah, can yeah. always be yeah. together. Just by the le leopard, uh, leopard geckos, <laughs> we have the corn snake. Yes, we do. We have the corn snake. Just talk, uh, just talk me through this sort of enclosure. Yeah, so uh, red, just to start off, is, um, He's very um, tame, and he should. Uh, he'll come out for us if we just tell him where he is. Hello, Red. This is a five foot long, two foot front to back, and two foot tall enclosure. So it's a lot smaller than the like forty gallons that you see people um, sticking them in. Fully bioactive, like the rest of my setups. I've got a nice thick layer of um, leaf litter. Uh, because you know, like the woodland environment that the corn snake would be found in, that's what they'd have, and he likes to burrow in it, uh, go through it, and so on. Uh, I've got all these branches up here which are affixed to the walls using like little pieces of wood that are painted black uh, with screws put into them so that fastens them and they're not going anywhere despite this big, uh, this big bugger who's decided to be shy today. Um, despite uh, his weight, half a kilo. Or more, pretty, depending. Pretty heavy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. He, he can go round on them and uh, without yeah. a worry. Now, what we will see Red doing, um, reasonably often, is he'll go and splay out up there where those two branches meet, like a green tree python. He'll just spread out on it, yeah. and then he'll send one coil, like either his head or his tail, or even just a loop, around here. So that's directly under the UV lamp, which is a 12% T8 uh, UV lamp. Yeah. Which is higher than what people would think, but um, with it being T8 and there being the lamp guard in front of it, uh, just up here where he's putting his coil, we get a UV index of approximately 2, which is just about what we'd want. Now, that is not ideal because the highest UV index is here and not at the basking zone, uh, which I do want to improve this basking zone so I get a value of about 1 here. Uh, but I would like to have a nice slate stack there and also alter me method of temperature measurement to more like what I'm doing in the new enclosure and also in my bearded dragon setup. Master and Miss Chief, Miss Chief, Charlie Bearded Dragon. You can see that's he's also, got a, That's also featured. Yes, <laughs> the good old logo. Uh, you can see he's got like soil on his nose because he uh, he dug out that um, enormous burrow the other day. He just went mad on a digging spree. I was thinking about washing him before he's come over, like, but uh, <laughs> I thought, you know what? Clean char isn't real char. Char's yeah. always dirty. Um, but uh, again, substrate. Why? Why? Why yeah. substrate? Well. Yeah, I suppose that is an important. I mean, point. I mean, I would provide substrate, not not to. I'm just being yeah. plain devil's advocate yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, there is debate about this because bearded dragons don't seem to show any of the specialisations of, um, you know, sandy environment living animals. Like, for example, you see his ears are completely clear. They don't have like protective scales. Then um, I think like a U-shaped respiratory tube um, is uh, one feature, but. It is, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, they do live on red sand in the wild. There's no doubt about that. Right, so just a quick rundown on Charles heating and lighting here. Uh, you'll see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly eight lamps. I can't even remember, I've lost count now. Um, but just a rundown of what it is. So up at the front here, we do have a T5 um, 14% output um, 
high output UVB lamp. Um, there we have a two foot long, six percent output high output um, HO T5 UVB lamp. Now these are put on with this one comes on first and it will provide a UV index of two to three where the dragon's going to be sitting. That is char of course. Um, and uh, then later on during the day this big one in the middle will come on and what that does is it um, boosts the UV index near the middle of the day so that we're getting at the basking zone between four and five if he climbs up this branch he can if you just angle this right you can see it's getting on towards five um, you can see here we're, we're, we're getting on towards five. So that's about right for a Ferguson's own three species, but I just wanted to stress that they are staggered so that he has a range going from no UV early, early doors, then about two or three um, from this lamp a bit later, and at the middle of the day he gets extra high, so when he comes to bask he can get that much needed UV. The lights over here for basking, we just have an LED lamp there that is not a halogen bulb, the one at the back. It is um, an LED for extra visible light. I'm probably going to be changing that out because I do just like to try different lamps uh, to make sure I've got the right configuration. I've had a bit of a mess with that one. I want to try something else there now. Then this one at the front is what is mainly controlling the temperatures in this enclosure. There are fans on this for controlling air temperatures and there are also on the Lacerta bilineata vivarium um, that we will show you at some point as well. I do allow all my animals to hibernate here that can hibernate or brewmate however you want to say it. Uh, but for that substrate is obviously a necessity. Uh, you can see the basking zone there with the, the stack of slate. That is, um, he is able to go under that and that's typically where he goes to brewmate. But um, he has got that other bit under the court bark now, so what he's going to do this year, I do not know. So I'm here with Shaw, the Famous bearded dragon, absolute stunning creature. Now this is kept in what? What did you say? What size enclosure? Five by two by two feet. Five, five by two by two feet, which is a remarkable size for an enclosure, especially indoors. And yeah, this is one of Joe's animals, obviously, and it is an absolute beauty. We just fed some dubia roaches earlier. We'll show you some clips of that. But you can see his enclosure is packed with enrichment. You now you can climb, you can bask, you can dig. And it just includes everything that you need when keeping these beautiful animals. And it's not just about keeping outdoors, we're not just about keeping outdoors, we're also about advancing the hobby, advancing how we care for these animals, not specifically European animals, I must add. And so coming over to Joe's has really opened us up, opened us up to the idea that not everyone keeps European stuff, and that's fine, because you can keep things like this perfectly fine indoors with the right setup. So if you want to know more about that, Go ahead and check out J2B's Reptiles channel again. I'll keep saying that because it's a fantastic channel. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so on to the next one. For the next part of this tour, I'm just going to hand you over to Joe and he'll just do a little rundown of his Chinese leopard snake enclosures. In these two enclosures here, which are three feet long, two feet front to back and one foot two tall each, I do have my two Chinese leopard snakes. Now Chinese leopard snakes are not really things that anybody's heard of and the more commonly used name for them is twin spot rat snake but I personally avoid that because it doesn't tell you as much about the animal as does the alternative common name being Chinese leopard snake. 
These are a small species of colubrid snake and, as the common name that I use implies, they are found in China. They do look rather similar to corn snakes in their sort of appearance, but the pattern's completely different and the behaviour is significantly different as well. As unlike corn snakes, these snakes are rather shy and they do seem to prefer humid microclimates. Anybody who's been keeping up with my own videos recently will know that I did try putting these two snakes together to see how Cohab would work with them, but after a fortnight of that I did decide to separate them because the male named Rusty was chasing around the female named Chloe just a bit too much and I wasn't really happy with keeping them together like that just because it might be causing unnecessary stress to that female. Now, with saying that, it is important, obviously, if you are going to try cohabitation, that you are going to have spur setups so that if separation is required, then you are prepared and you are able to do it. And to this end, I will mention that I do have full capacity to set up a very basic leopard gecko enclosure if I decide to separate those lizards. <laughs> So uh, this incredible setup, Joe. What, what's in it? <laughs> uh, there's three line day geckos in here. Uh, the the Bombetokensis subspecies, so Phasuma lineata Bombetokensis. Um, there's three at 1.2, so one male, two females. Uh, you can see it's a little bit small this enclosure, to be honest. I wish it was bigger, uh, but you know it's heavily planted. There's a uh, Creeping fig, ficus um, coisifolia, oak leaf creeping fig. There's a bin of magravia in there, a couple of species of pilea, uh, bromeliads, there's um, phytonia, and there is the baby's tears, which I found as a weed, and um, I've just propagated in there. But uh, the heating and lighting, just simple. Got a T5 um, UVB lamp, halogen bulb, which you could do with me over there slightly. <laughs> and uh, two LEDs which help the plants grow. Uh, unfortunately this tank's not looking the best at the moment because I did only trim it the other day so the plants are a bit pale from where they were hidden by other leaves. Um, but it looks okay that setup. It's definitely not my favourite but I think it looks alright. So in this enclosure, it's 45 by 45 by 60 centimetre exoterra. This houses my crested gecko, Splat. It is an absolute little nutcase. Uh, we can see it's planted with, it's got bromeliads up at the top, which are blushing nicely. It's got the red flowers of the anthurium. Uh, there's devil's ivy, leaf litter down the bottom. Uh, got some magnetic, a man, magnetic feeding bowl and a magnetic hide. Uh, Splat the crested gecko always sleeps in that magnetic hide, it doesn't go anywhere else. I don't really see him out much to be honest. This is his domain. Uh, he stays in that little hide. Just again, simple setup, worth mentioning of course, that like all of the rest of my reptiles, I do offer him UVB. Uh, there's a heat lamp in the back, it's a red bulb just because I'm testing it out. Um, couple of different types of LEDs on there, some Skylight Tinies and the Jungle Dawn LED bar. Basically it's just a really simple little setup, nice little addition to the room, but not too fancy. So I hope you enjoyed our tour of Joe's amazing reptile building, some incredible animals and more importantly in an incredible setups. And, and an incredible person. And an incredible oh. person. <laughs> oh. And because of oh, that compliments. Oh. <laughs> and because of that we're gonna link everything down in the description. <laughs> and a there was a frog, there was a frog. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna link everything down in the description and we put videos to check out all through this video. So I hope you have a great day, and please stay tuned with Celtic Reptile and Amphibian.